Hey and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing some sort of through the doorway type VFX shot as you can see in the example here. So since we're using the compositor, um, things are going to be pretty much the same as the last one but with a few little differences. So again make sure we're in cycles render. You also want to make sure the resolution is the same as the movie clip that you're using. So also make sure this is at 100% as well. So now we can change this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And go ahead and load in the movie clip. So if you want to use this movie clip, as always, I'll leave a link in the description. You can go ahead and download that. Um, but the first thing we need to do is set the scene frames. So let's click this button here. And what this will do is match the timeline to our movie clip length. The next thing we can do is prefetch the movie clip. Now if this doesn't fill up all the way, what you need to do is go to File, then User Preferences, go over to System here, and then just increase this memory cache limit to something a bit more than what you've already got. And then you can save the settings, and prefetch again and it should fill up all the way. So let's play through this clip and see what we're working with. So it's pretty good. Uh, one problem that we do have is, um, as you can see, the green screen doesn't go all the way, so we will need to create a mask as well just to mask that out. But it's moving as well, so the background needs to be moving. So we're going to be tracking this by using one point and then using the uh, track input node to move things around. So let's jump back to the first frame and let's uh, create a tracking point. So let's go over here to the tracking settings. We want to change the motion. We want to choose location scale since everything's moving closer towards the camera, it's moving in scale. Next thing we can do is change this from keyframe to previous frame. Then we want to check normalize as well. Okay, we also want to check search size so we can see the search size. And if we zoom in, we can pick a point where we want to track. Now obviously we don't want to track the door since the door's moving uh, in a different direction to where the background would. So. I want to add uh, a tracking point to say maybe this one here. So hold control and then left click. So it adds a tracking point for us. Then we can press S to scale it. You can press G to move it around. And if we want, you can increase the search size as well. Okay, so when we have this, we want to track this forwards and backwards. So, so let's track this backwards now. Okay, when it gets to here, it cuts off. So let's just jump a few frames forward. See, we can get rid of this one here, this frame, so we want to clear anything beyond this. Then we can go back to this frame here, and then track it forwards. Again, it does the same thing where it cuts off because the door goes in the way, but, but if we just go to, say, here where the door doesn't intersect, we can clear the frames. And there we go. Okay, it's not perfect, we do see some jumping around. So if you're using this technique for your example, then you might need to create a better tracking marker. But that'll work fine for us now. So what we can do while we're here now is create a mask. So we need to change this from the tracking mode to the masking mode. Go ahead and press new. And let's call this garbage or garb1. So now if we hold control and left click, we can create a little mask here. And then press Alt and C to close the mask. Okay, so I don't want to go too close to this wall because if you can see it's kind of blurry, we want to create that blur as well. So we have it pretty close to it, but not actually touching. That should be fine. What we need to do as well is animate this mask. So if we move through, we can see the camera is obviously going to move around here. And then when the door closes, we also need to animate it as well. So let's start from the beginning around before it starts moving. If we click this icon, this is going to automatically add keyframes every time we move something. So, so let's first set the first keyframe. So press A to select everything. Then press G. And then we just hit enter on the keyboard. It's just set our first keyframe. So now we scrub backwards a little bit, a few frames. And as the camera starts to move, if we, since we've got everything selected, if we hit G, we can just move things over like this. And then move a few frames backwards. Do the same thing, press G. So I'm using the keyboard, the left arrow key, to move a few frames backwards, then hitting G again. Moving this over. And then let's do it one more time. 
Now we move one frame and then press G and just move this out of shot like so. So now if we go forwards, we see it's animated so far. And you want to take your time with this, you want to put some more effort into it because you'll see it later on in the results, you know, how good or bad you do this masking. So let's go forward. We need to just do a bit more masking. So now when this door closes, we need to animate these two. So we press A to make sure everything's deselected. And then if we hit B, we uh, we can box select these. We can select these two here. We just move the frames forward. So when it gets to about here, we can press G and then hit enter. That's just set a keyframe. One frame, press G, move this closer, move one frame, press G, again. Now we can select everything here, just press G and grab this out of the way. Again, you wanna make sure this is a lot more, uh, a lot tidier than what I've done here, so we could actually go back and refine this if we need to, if it's not looking too good. But we'll also add a blur as well, blur node, to make sure this is uh, this blends in nicely. So now we've got this done, we can move on to the uh, the compositor. So let's change this over to the node editor. And as always, we need to check the use scene tab, check use nodes, and backdrop. Now we don't need this render layer. We can delete that. Shift A, go to input, movie clip. Let's connect this up as well. And also add a viewer node, shift A, output viewer. And just connect that up. So since we already loaded it up, we can select this icon here. Just choose a chroma key. Let's just zoom out as well so we can see what we're doing. Okay. So first thing we can do is get rid of this green screen, which is pretty simple. We've done a, a quick tutorial on this in the past, but I'm going to show you again how we do that. Shift A, go to mat. Then we want a keying. We just want to drag this and drop this here. Now, before we drop, uh, connect this to the viewer, um, in fact, well, we shouldn't connect it to the viewer first. What we want to do is select this color icon here. Select the color picker tool. And then we just want to select that green color there. Now we can connect this up to the viewer node. If we didn't do that, it would just, I'll show you what it does. <laughs> it kind of does this, gets rid of some nastiness. So don't do that. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got that green. It's not perfect since we've got some artifacts here. So what I like to do is select the green color again. And now just drag this closer to the center. And as you do that, you can see it goes away. Um, one thing you should notice as well um, is it will affect the background. Obviously, you can, it's, you can tell already it's affected the green color, which is not a big deal. I kind of like that it's got rid of the green. But it will affect it by creating some artifacts as well. Um, so if we select the matte output and plug this into the viewer. So this is the mask that is created. As you can see, we want to get this all completely white and make sure this is completely black. So what we can do is go to clip white, just drag this down. So as we do that, the whites get brighter, which is good. I mean, it doesn't happen everywhere because yeah, it's not going to, but that's good for now. Let's connect this back up to the viewer node. It's looking a lot better. Let's just get rid of this problem over here. So shift A, go to input, then mask, just drop this down here. Then we want to choose the mask that we created, which is that garbage one, and plug this into the garbage. So as soon as we do that, it kind of gets rid of it. We do have a little bit of trouble here because it's not uh, blended in. So shift A, go to filter, then blur, just drop this in right after it. And we just kind of want to match the blur around it. So again, each scene is going to be different depending on what you're working on. Just kind of play around with these values until you find something that works for you. And again, you can always go back to the mask as well and um, just adjust it if you need to. It pays to uh, take your time when you're doing your masking as well. So now that's done, what we can do is add another image behind it, which is pretty simple to do. Let's just tidy things up here. Oh, another thing I should mention is the uh, the core mat, which is this here. We can plug something into it, another mask like we did here, and it will get rid of any artifacts. Okay, so let's now add the background. I'm going to go ahead and add another movie clip, so Shift D and duplicate this. 
Now let's get rid of this as well. Um, so let's go ahead and combine these. So Shift A, go to color. And we want to use an alpha over. And let's just drop this up here. Plug this into the viewer node. In fact, we want this one to be on the bottom as well. Then if we drag this one, plug this into the top. Let's just move this over here. Okay, so now it's <laughs> it's blown out with blue. So we just need to check convert pre-multiply. So I, just, <laughs> I selected the wrong, uh, wrong movie clip there. So I just had to pause that and change it. Anyway, so now we need to move the background. Since if we play through the clip, we can see that the background doesn't move. And it should do. It looks, it looks strange. <laughs> so we're going to use the same technique as we did in a previous tutorial. We've done it a couple of times now. We're just going to add a translate node and then just move things around. So if we shift A, distort, then add a transform node. Just plug this in here. And then what we're going to do is shift A, go to input and track position. Now in the past, we've used the offset X, Y, scale and angle. But for this example, we can use the track position and this will work fine for us. Let's uh, select this icon here. Now we have a couple of movie clips and the one we want to use is the chroma key since that's the one that we used the tracking marker for. So select this icon here, select your chroma key footage. Then for this one, we just want to select camera. And then for this one, we want to select the track. Again, if you don't see this, you need to change your movie clip um, until you find it where you can actually use it. So now we can plug this into the X and the Y, but when we do that, the background is gonna shoot off into a certain direction and it's not always the same direction. So what I like to do is first connect the X and we can see it's disappeared. So what we can do is Shift D, duplicate this transform node, plug this in here. Since it's somewhere in the X, we can move this and do it in small, we can do it in small increments by two or 300. So we eventually find it. So if you still don't find it, set it back to zero and then go in the opposite direction until you do find it. But um, yeah, it can be a little bit of a pain to find sometimes, <laughs> but just drag it over until you find it. Now we can plug in the Y and it's only moved up a little bit. So we could just move this back down. That should be good. Now if we play through the background should also move as well. So now let's blend things in a bit better. The guy on this guy here is very dark blue. I want to get rid of that. What you could do is change that color to a lighter blue or just get rid of it completely, which is what I'm going to do. So on this footage here, so before it plugs into the keying node, I'm just going to shift A, go to color, hue correct, just drop this in here. And what I'm going to do, since we're on the saturation channel, I just want to reduce the saturation of those dark blues and also you'll notice it'll do it for the floor as well but that's that's fine I don't mind so let's just drag these down here as we do that we can see it desaturates these blues that looks pretty good so that looks fine now I want to add some more contrast back into this so I'll just drop that down shift A I'm gonna to go to color mix just drop this in here and then I want to plug this back in shift A go to converter RGB to black and white drop this in here and let's just change this to soft light because it's a lot more contrasted so let's just this is before let's just add a touch of contrast you can use any background image um, it'd be interesting to see what you guys actually come up with using this technique but if you do create something awesome with this uh, feel free to post it to the facebook group i'll throw a link in the description as well so check that out um, but yeah you can go ahead and add some color grading if you want just tie things in so shift a color color balance so when it comes to color grading it's all subjective it's things that you like other people might not so and i'll create something that looks good for you but I think that looks uh, pretty good. I, I've just noticed, uh, as I mentioned before, there's some artifacts, as you can see. And that's down to the chroma key to, for the keying node. So what we could actually do, um, this is optional if you see these 
artifacts and you see up here for example if I just move one frame to the left or right we see they just disappear or maybe not over a couple of frames well, this one's just appeared and a few have disappeared so you get the idea we can fix that so we go back to the movie clip editor and this time we want to create the core map so let's just create a new mask I'll call this core so within this core mask we want to create a mask for this side and this side since that's where it's going to affect we don't want to include the green screen obviously so we just want to create a mask for this side and that side so so now we've just created a mask we can create layers within this mask so for example so this side can be one layer and this side can be another layer and obviously we need to animate them which is pretty simple we don't need to be very uh, too accurate on this step so let's go ahead and create the first layer we're going to name this right since this is the right side and what I'll do is just control left click create a very simple mask then press alt C and position this like so and since we already have this automatic keyframes activated we can just animate this mask as it plays through so press A to select all of them press G then enter that's just set a keyframe if we play through this we want to kind of match that back up so like we did before just select these two here press G and move it over moving backwards G move it over so now if we play forwards if you can see it's not really matching up perfectly that's okay this is just for the core mat as long as we don't go into the green we'll be fine so keep playing it backwards press G bring it backwards so now we've done this side just play through we can go ahead and create uh, the layer for that side so the plus button double click this rename this left and what we can do as well is if we click this icon here we no longer can touch this mask that we created I mean you can also get disable it so we don't have to see it but I prefer to see it so let's create the uh, the other mask for this side and again we don't need to be too accurate we're only worried about the door we're not worried about the man so let's start here control left click I'm going to overlap these masks it's okay press alt C press A to deselect everything press B let's just select these bring them closer a little bit okay so now we've got these selected if we play this footage forward now we actually want to follow this door so press G grab this backwards play it forwards press G again it's the exact same steps just grab it with this though the door you can see the door changed perspective so this one you might actually need to keep adjusting so it matches the perspective of the door Okay, so when you've got that done, uh, you can go back and refine it since, you know, it doesn't look too great there, but that should be fine. And now we can go back to the node editor. And then all we need to do is we plug this into the keying node when I find it. So it's this one here. Shift A. Input mask. Choose the core mask. Let's plug this into the core mat and as we do that you can see these artifacts go away and that again it helps sell it make it look better um, again the more accurate you are with it and um, the better it will look but as you can see towards the edges it's not too noticeable when it's around here it's very noticeable so again that's why I wasn't too accurate with this core mask but with the uh, with the garbage mask you do need to be accurate as you can see there's still more we could have done here to make it look a little bit better but I think you get the idea um, yeah so once you've, you're happy with everything and you want to render this out you can go ahead and go down to the output 
you want to change this file type from PNG to FFmpeg video if you want to render this as a video. You also want to make sure you set the encoding. What we can do is choose the preset. And I like to use the preset H.264 in MP4 format. That seems to work best for me. Then also make sure you set the output of this. So I'll click this and choose where you want to save this out to. And then you can go ahead and press animation. So hopefully this tutorial helped. Um, if it did, be sure to give it a like. As I mentioned before, if you want to post a link to our Facebook group with your results, then yeah, it's always great to see what you guys are making. So as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.